The world has changed a lot in the last few thousand years, especially in the last few centuries and a major contribution to this development has been done by the great minds of the finest scientists around the planet. The world's greatest scientists' amazing discoveries, inventions, research, experiments, and ideas have been crucial in making society's present structure. From mobile phones to spacecraft, ceiling fans to windmills, and vehicles to the internet, everything around the world has been the brainchild of these great minds of the world. Sir Isaac Newton Isaac Newton was born on January 4, 1643, in Woolsthorpe, Lincolnshire, England. The son of a farmer who died three months before he was born, Newton spent most of his early years with his maternal grandmother after his mother remarried. His education was interrupted by a failed attempt to turn him into a farmer and he attended the King's School in Grantham before enrolling at the University of Cambridge's Trinity College in 1661. Newton studied a classical curriculum at Cambridge, but he became fascinated by the works of modern philosophers such as René Descartes, even devoting a set of notes to his outside readings he titled Quaestiones Quidam Philosophici, Certain Philosophical Questions. When the Great Plague shuttered Cambridge in 1665, Newton returned home and began formulating his theories on calculus, light, and color, his farm the setting for the supposed falling apple that inspired his work on gravity. Newton returned to Cambridge in 1667 and was elected a minor fellow. He constructed the first reflecting telescope in 1668 and the following year he received his Master of Arts degree and took over as Cambridge's Lucasian Professor of Mathematics. Asked to give a demonstration of his telescope to the Royal Society of London in 1671, he was elected to the Royal Society the following year and published his notes on optics for his peers. Through his experiments with refraction, Newton determined that white light was a composite of all the colors on the spectrum, and he asserted that light was composed of particles instead of waves. His methods drew sharp rebuke from established society member Robert Hooke, who was unsparing again with Newton's follow-up paper in 1675. Known for his temperamental defense of his work, Newton engaged in heated correspondence with Hooke before suffering a nervous breakdown and withdrawing from the public eye in 1678. In the following years, he returned to his earlier studies on the forces governing gravity and dabbled in alchemy. In 1684, English astronomer Edmund Halley paid a visit to the secluded Newton. Upon learning that Newton had mathematically worked out the elliptical paths of celestial bodies, Halley urged him to organize his notes. The result was the 1687 publication of Philosophia Naturalis Principia Mathematica, Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, which established the three laws of motion and the law of universal gravity. Newton's three laws of motion state that, 1, every object in a state of uniform motion will remain in that state of motion unless an external force acts on it, 2, force equals mass times acceleration, FMA and, 3, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Newton was also an ardent student of history and religious doctrines, and his Writings on those subjects were compiled into multiple books that were published posthumously. Having never married, Newton spent his later years living with his niece at Cranberry Park near Winchester, England. He died in his sleep on March 31, 1727, and was buried in Westminster Abbey. Marie Curie Marie Curie, née Maria Sklodowska was born in Warsaw on November 7, 1867, the daughter of a secondary school teacher. 
She received a general education in local schools and some scientific training from her father. She became involved in a students' revolutionary organization and found it prudent to leave Warsaw, then in the part of Poland dominated by Russia, for Krakow, which at that time was under Austrian rule. In 1891, she went to Paris to continue her studies at the Sorbonne where she obtained licenciateships in physics and the mathematical sciences. She met Pierre Curie, professor in the School of Physics in 1894 and in the following year they were married. She succeeded her husband as head of the physics laboratory at the Sorbonne, gained her Doctor of Science degree in 1903, and... Following the tragic death of Pierre Curie in 1906, she took his place as professor of general physics in the Faculty of Sciences, the first time a woman had held this position. She was also appointed director of the Curie Laboratory in the Radium Institute of the University of Paris, founded in 1914. Her early researches, together with her husband, were often performed under difficult conditions. Laboratory arrangements were poor and both had to undertake much teaching to earn a livelihood. The discovery of radioactivity by Henry Becquerel in 1896 inspired the Curies in their brilliant researches and analyses which led to the isolation of polonium, named after the country of Marie's birth, and radium. Madame Curie developed methods for the separation of radium from radioactive residues in sufficient quantities to allow for its characterization and the careful study of its properties, therapeutic properties in particular. Madame Curie throughout her life actively promoted the use of radium to alleviate suffering and during World War I, assisted by her daughter, Irene. She personally devoted herself to this remedial work. She retained her enthusiasm for science throughout her life and did much to establish a radioactivity laboratory in her native city. In 1929 President Hoover of the United States presented her with a gift of $50,000, donated by American Friends of Science, to purchase radium for use in the laboratory in Warsaw. Madame Curie, quiet, dignified and unassuming, was held in high esteem and admiration by scientists throughout the world. She was a member of the Concile du Physique Salve from 1911 until her death and since 1922 she had been a member of the Committee of Intellectual Cooperation of the League of Nations. Her work is recorded in numerous papers in scientific journals and she is the author of Recherches sur les substances radioactives, 1904, L'isotope et les elements isotopes and the classic trait de radioactivite, 1910. The importance of Madame Curie's work is reflected in the numerous awards bestowed on her. She received many honorary science, medicine, and law degrees and honorary memberships of learned societies throughout the world. Together with her husband, she was awarded half of the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1903, for their study into the spontaneous radiation discovered by Becquerel, who was awarded the other half of the prize. In 1911 she received a second Nobel Prize this time in chemistry, in recognition of her work in radioactivity. She also received, jointly with her husband, the Davy Medal of the Royal Society in 1903 and, in 1921, President Harding of the United States, on behalf of the women of America, presented her with one gram of radium in recognition of her service to science. Madame Curie died in Savoy, France, after a short illness, on July 4, 1934. Albert Einstein Albert Einstein was born at Ulm in Baden-Württemberg, Germany, on March 14, 1879, into a non-observant Jewish family. At age five, his father showed him a pocket compass, and Einstein realized that something in empty space acted upon the needle, 
He would later describe the experience as one of the most revelatory of his life. In 1908, Einstein was appointed privatdozent in Bern. The next year, he became professor extraordinary in Zurich, and in 1911 professor of theoretical physics at Prague, returning to Zurich in 1912 to fill a similar post. In 1914, he was appointed director of the Kaiser Wilhelm Physical Institute and professor in the University of Berlin. He became a German citizen in 1914 and remained in Berlin until 1933, when he renounced his citizenship for political reasons, and emigrated to America to take the position of professor of theoretical physics at Princeton. He became a U.S. citizen in 1940 and retired from his post in 1945. Einstein received honorary doctorate degrees in science, medicine, and philosophy from many European and American universities. During the 1920s, he lectured in Europe, America, and the Far East and was awarded fellowships or memberships to all of the leading scientific academies throughout the world. He gained numerous awards in recognition of his work, including the Copley Medal of the Royal Society of London in 1925, and the Franklin Medal of the Franklin Institute in 1935. Stephen Hawking Stephen William Hawking was born on January 8, 1942 on Oxford, Oxfordshire, England. He was an English theoretical physicist, cosmologist, author, and director of research at the Centre for Theoretical Cosmology within the University of Cambridge. His scientific works include a collaboration with Roger Penrose on gravitational singularity theorems in the framework of general relativity and the theoretical prediction that black holes emit radiation, often called Hawking radiation. Hawking was the first to set out a theory of cosmology explained by a union of the general theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. He was a vigorous supporter of the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Hawking was an honorary fellow of the Royal Society of Arts, FRSA, a lifetime member of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, and a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom the highest civilian award in the United States. In 2002, Hawking was ranked number 25 in the BBC's poll of the 100 Greatest Britons. He was the Lucasian Professor of Mathematics at the University of Cambridge between 1979 and 2009 and achieved commercial success with works of popular science in which he discusses his own theories and cosmology in general. His book A Brief History of Time appeared on the British Sunday Times bestseller list for a record-breaking 237 weeks. At the release party for the home video version of A Brief History of Time, 1991, Leonard Nimoy, who had played Spock on Star Trek, 1966, learned that Hawking was interested in appearing on the series. Nimoy made the necessary contact, and Hawking played a holographic simulation of himself in an episode of Star Trek, The Next Generation, 1987, in 1993. The same year, his synthesizer voice was recorded for the song Keep Talking by the rock band Pink Floyd, and in 1999 for an appearance on The Simpsons, 1989. Hawking also guest starred on Futurama, 1999, and The Big Bang Theory, 2007. Dot Hawking allowed the use of his copyrighted voice in the biographical drama The Theory of Everything, 2014, in which he was portrayed by Eddie Redmayne in an Academy Award winning role. Hawking died at age 76 in his home in Cambridge, Cambridgeshire, England early in the morning of March 14, 2018.